my pledge to you is that I will do my best to try to balance out these more controversial viewpoints with other people's perspectives so we can maybe find a better point of view. I don't want to just show the, the contrary opinion to what the narrative is. I want to show all kinds of opinions so that we can all figure out what's going on and, and not just about COVID, about everything. That was Spotify podcaster Joe Rogan responding to the backlash surrounding his stance on COVID-19 vaccinations after singer Neil Young pulled his catalog from the Spotify platform in protest. Now, Spotify shares they did rebound today, even as more artists pledge to remove their music. So will a new COVID-19 information hub be enough to keep more musicians from leaving the streaming platform? Big question there. CFRA analyst John Freeman joins us now to discuss alongside Yahoo Finance's own media and entertainment reporter, Alexandra Canal. Okay, so let's get into it here. John, first to you, want to get your reaction to the share price move today and what most notably stands out from this particular instance that Spotify is having to move through, having its own kind of Netflix, Dave Chappelle moment, if you will. Right, yeah. So the key is that Spotify is not a platform per se. I think I think it's it, I think it's definitely arguable that it is a media company and therefore has, you know, an editorial obligation. Whether or not that passes legal muster, I don't know, but I can I, I believe that kind of, you know, users and and uh, and people who who um, who uh, subscribers and and even the free users who listen to Spotify they feel that, you know, right? it's more like a radio station than it is, you know, uh, Facebook where sort of anybody can put up their opinion and, you know, there's more, uh, there's more sort of leeway, um, uh, with regard to tagging that information and so forth. The disclaimer definitely helps, but I don't think that Joe Rogan sort of, you know, hey, all opinions are equal with regard to things like that. I don't think that passes muster. And I think there is a potential for backlash that, that Spotify really has to be careful of. Um, but of course, at this level, you know, I, I still have a buy on the stock because it, it there are some very powerful secular trends that are driving uh, the, the, the growth of the company worldwide. And yet at the same time, they have some powerful bundler, you know, competitors like Amazon and Apple that they can't, you know, it, it's not like they have uh, a lot of leeway, you know, the same kind of leeway that, for example, Facebook would have or Google would have, you know, in search. You know, you just don't, you know, there's just not that many alternatives. I think there are more legitimate alternatives to Spotify. So that is definitely a concern and a risk. And John, let's talk about some of that potential for growth. I mean, Spotify listeners, they've clearly connected with Joe Rogan's podcast. It's the most popular one on the platform, boasting 11 million users. So how much of this is about protecting Rogan and that asset? Because not only could this help lead to more successful podcasts down the line, but it's also a great, great way for Spotify to expand its advertising unit. Right. So that's an interesting. So right now, more than 80 percent of their revenue comes from subscriptions. And they're really trying to drive the um, the the advertising side of that revenue, particularly important in countries you know, outside of the U.S. where there's not as much disposable income. But there's certainly a lot of interest. Uh, India, for example, has a tremendous uh, subscriber growth and, and is really starting to become a, you know, a pretty significant uh, uh, amount in terms of the number of total subscribers. Um, so that is a, you know, that, that is a, um, uh, uh, you know, that, that I, I, th I think that's, 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 that's meaningful. I don't know, you know, 11 million subs you know, people listening, li listening to Joe Rogan. I think the key number is how many would leave Spotify, right? If Joe Rogan went somewhere else, I think that might be a meaningful question. I'm obviously that's sort of a hypothetical. They've got a relatively long-term contract, but you know, so that's, that's a, it's, it's, I think it's, I think the backlash is still a concern. Um, and, and I think they need to handle this, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, very carefully. And I, I, I think the disclaimer is probably a good start, but maybe not the end. I think they, they should probably, you know, uh, construct some some protective moats around this kind of content that could be, mm -hmm. you know, that could, you know, for one reason, it could attract government uh, scrutiny, which is another sort of thing that uh, uh, Spotify, and maybe not in this country, but in others, that's something that Spotify doesn't want to be, you know, anywhere near, right? 
Well, we know that there's already a lot of scrutiny on Amazon and also Apple in this country, maybe Microsoft as well. Um, let me just pose you the, qu the question this way. I'm wondering about churn within the industry. You talk about people following Joe Rogan to another platform. How many would leave if he stays? I'm just wondering because I have mm. been a YouTube music subscriber for years, um, grandfathered in from YouTube Red. I'm not changing, I'm not gonna go anywhere. I've never even tried right. Spotify because I'm happy. I'm just wondering how that shakes out in the industry. Right. So it's not just in terms of the number of subs that would uh, that would leave, but it was, it's also the number of subs that wouldn't join, you know, if when they get presented with the choice, because I think we've got a long, you know, we got we got a lot of growth, subscriber growth ahead of us in this, you know, in the the let's call it the the audible content space. Right. And so I think that's that's really what what is, you know, potentially concerning. I mean, I, we're not talking about, you know, a disaster where it falls off a cliff, but we're, we are talking about, you know, perhaps clipping that growth significantly, which would have, you know, an outsized uh, uh, impact on a on a growth stock like Spotify. So that's that's kind of where I'm, you know, I'm, also, I'm sort of focused on it. Got, it also comes down to the, the demographic of user, right? Because if you have a an artist that decides to take the alter or the alternative side of Joe Rogan, who is actually carrying a larger fan base, and in the core demographic that Spotify is going on, what what type of impact would that have, or how would investors even look at that situation where you know it's a fan base that? one artist carries, because if we look at the artists that have said that they're going to go elsewhere, um, that's perhaps on the higher end of the age demographic or spectrum that Spotify um, sees among its user group. Right. I, I think the artists who are leaving are not necessarily going to take subs with them, right? I think Neil Young is going to take 11 million subs. No way, right? Not even in the ballpark. However, it signifies something. And if somebody can get most of the content that they want, most of their music content that they want with Amazon or Apple, you know, just as sort of a uh, uh, sort of a social good motivation kind of a thing. You know, we see this kind of coming in and becoming more important. Activision, I think, was another sort of example. I, I think they dodged a bullet with their with the you know with the acquisition by Microsoft. But there were a lot of play. You know, there's a lot of interest in you know not playing at you know looking for alternatives to Activision because of the lawsuit of uh, the state of California suing Activision of. Uh, for you know, uh, uh, promoting a, a, a culture of a pervasive sexual harassment and so forth. So these social issues do matter, not necessarily for any specific artist, but I, I'm you know I'm thinking more sort of generally speaking, you know, as a as a as a backlash, right? And John, real quickly here, just to wrap this up, what kind of precedent do you think Spotify is setting moving forward, and especially when it tries to get other exclusive podcast deals on the platform? Right. Well, I think they're basically saying that your speech is going to be protected. We might have to disclaim it. Um, but there's a couple of other things that have been bothering me about Spotify. Um, you know, despite all the, like I said, I have a buy on the stock and a lot of secular uh, uh, growth trends, but I did downgrade it from strong buy to buy because, you know, there's a lot of other things that are going on. They, the, they're bundling their customer service, um, you know, advertisements popping up in the middle of, of meditation uh, applications, you know, meditation you know, listening sort of uh, a content that you don't want, you know, the middle of it to be to be interrupted. That just seems there's a lot of things like that that kind of struck me struck me as, as a, you know, poor execution, poor operational execution. And I'd like to see, you know, I, I'd like to see some some improvement on that as well. Um, and the, kind of the way they've handled this has been a little, you know, ragged. So those are the kinds of things it's more indicative, right, than than specific to this issue right now, if that makes sense. John Freeman, CFRA analyst and our own Alexandra Gnall joining us here today to talk all things Spotify. And we'll see how they continue to chart their own course and navigate out of this issue that they found themselves in. Thank you both for the conversation here.